But if you have even a small audience, usually it's not the size of the audience that's the problem. Usually it's your ability to convert more of them. Right. And a solo podcast is going to do a much better job of putting money in the bank than a guesting podcast. Good day to you, my friend. Welcome to episode 12 of Solo Podcasting Simplified. I'm Jason Sircone, and today I am proud to bring you the very first guest here on Solo Podcasting Simplified. Now, if you've been following the content up to this point, you know that I am a very big proponent of the solo podcasting approach. Many of the episodes of this podcast are built primarily through the solo efforts of yours truly. But I've also mentioned that if you connect with someone who can bring value and impact to your audience, and it makes sense for you to bring them onto your podcast, you do not want to rob your listeners of that value and impact. So as this show continues to move forward, every now and then, I'm going to be damn proud to bring you impactful guests who have used solo podcasting in their brand building efforts so they can share that insight with you. The goal here is for you to learn all of the valuable strategies and tips and methods and approaches that will help you take your solo podcasting game to the next level. I know that I am not the only voice on the planet. I may be the only one that's putting this much emphasis on it, but if I connect with someone who can bring you value, I am not going to hesitate to welcome them onto this show to have an action-packed conversation with me so we can bring more value to you. And that is what you are in store for today because I am sharing the mic with the one and only Mickey Anderson. I connected with Mickey a long time back. She's been a big influence on a lot of the things that I've done. She's been an incredible resource. She's a phenomenal human being. And today she is going to share how she has leveraged solo podcasting to grow her brand. Her show, Hustle Less, Profit More, does feature guests, but she also has leaned into the solo approach to create content where she can connect with her listeners one-on-one. -on -one. She has a ton of value surrounding the strategy that it takes to build a solo podcast, and Mickey and I are going to dive into those strategies today so you can implement them into all of your practices. So let's get into it. It's episode 12 of Solo Podcasting Simplified, all about solo podcasting strategy with me and my guest, Mickey Anderson. It's coming your way uninterrupted right after a quick word from yours truly. If you're a results-driven coach or consultant that really wants to sink your teeth into solo podcasting and produce multifaceted content that elevates your brand in undeniable ways, the Solo Podcasters Mastermind is calling your name. This fully interactive 60-day mastermind was built to help you develop the right mindset for podcasting, hone your solo podcasting skills, build a well-oiled podcast infrastructure to grow your show, and give you access to support from other solo podcasters. You'll even get assistance with post-production and have your show launched in less than 60 days. Get all the details and register to be part of the next Solo Podcasters Mastermind session at jasonsircone.com slash mastermind. Mickey Anderson, welcome to the studio. Before we get rolling today, because I'm very excited for what we're going to talk about today, but I got to ask you, how has podcasting impacted your life in a game-changing way? You know, I started the podcast with the sole goal of becoming a better speaker. It was a safe opportunity to practice speaking with other people, getting my message out there. And I can tell you, I absolutely have become a better speaker, but I've also managed to 10X my network, build incredible strategic partnerships. And I want to say over double my revenue since starting the podcast. So it's been, good. It's been going pretty good. <laughs> You are a living, breathing billboard of the value of good podcasting. And I can speak firsthand and having made a guest appearance on your show. And that's how you and I connected for the first time and got to know one another. Now I get to reciprocate and have you here on Solo Podcasting Simplified. It is a pleasure to get this opportunity to speak with you once again, Mickey. Ditto. I'm, I'm super excited to chat. 
So we know, or at least I know, you have utilized all these skills from the podcast world to make incredible content that you put out to the world. Obviously, that speaking component that you mentioned comes through in every video and reel that I see you produce. So you're doing wonderful things on the marketing side, and I know you've helped a lot of brands get their message dialed in and do some wonderful things, including myself. So I can't thank you enough for that. Just from our chats and conversations, you helped me do so much on that front. Give the listeners a little bit of insight into who is Mickey Anderson and how are you changing the world? I am a content marketer. I'm a strategist and I help entrepreneurs and authors create content that actually drives revenue. A lot of times we create a bunch of stuff and we're not tracking, measuring, or seeing any sort of results in our business. And that's a problem. We need to be able to generate revenue from the things we produce and be able to track and see what works and what doesn't work. It's the only way we're truly going to grow and maximize our brand. And so in 90 Day Sprints, I help entrepreneurs create content that drives sales, move customers from awareness to becoming loyal, raving fans. And we do it with your content, which can include your podcast. So your podcast, Hustle Less, Profit More, you've been doing a mix of solo and guest dynamics, right? Yeah, I started off with guests primarily to kind of get my foot in the door, learn the podcasting world because it was a new place for me. And now I have been creating a ton more solo episodes and all of season two moving forward of the show will be, I want to say, 80% solo episodes. That's awesome. So tell us about the benefits that you're seeing from that solo content versus the guest appearance content that you've utilized. One of the, the challenges when you're running a podcast with guests is positioning. We're essentially positioning ourselves, not as the expert. We're, we're positioning the guest as the expert, the authority. We're bringing in, gaining their audience, leveraging their expertise to help grow us, which can absolutely be helpful if that's what you need. But if you get to a place where you're an expert, you no longer need that positioning and you want to present yourself more as the expert and leverage yourself and your content. And so solo podcasting can absolutely help you help you do that because you're no longer using someone else, bouncing off of someone else. You're driving the content and positioning yourself as that expert in the podcast. That is one of my favorite elements of the solo podcasting approach is the fact that you keep the spotlight on yourself. And from start to finish, it's your message, it's your insights, it's your perspectives. That's what's making the impact. Not to take any value away from having those valuable conversations, because having that back and forth is also incredibly engaging and can provide those new perspectives for listeners. But ultimately, when those guest appearances and those interviews wrap up, you typically ask your guest, how can we follow you? And then the spotlight gets taken off you and the call to action gets pointed to listeners going towards that guest. Again, not a bad thing. And obviously you're going to get an opportunity to do that as we converse today. And obviously this show based on the solo podcasting approach, but at the same time, there's value in the insights of others. So not to step on my own point, but when you leverage your podcast in that solo fashion, all of the attention stays on you. And it's an incredible way to establish that no like, and trust factor and ultimately get your listeners impacted and invested in what you're producing and creating and showing them at the end. Yeah, when it comes to guests, having guests on your show, leveraging guests, there's there's kind of two pieces that I, I think about. The first is most people don't spend enough time qualifying those guests and making sure that they're in alignment with your goals and your brand. A lot of times we take on guests because they sound cool or they have a cool topic, but does it actually help your listener achieve what they want to through your brand? If not, then it's time to reconsider. And the other piece is you have no control over that other person. So they could completely derail your point, take yeah. you down a rabbit hole. And I've had guests show up on the show where we've recorded and I haven't been able to publish the episode because it was just such a departure from what I had hoped out of the episode. And no matter how much kind of gearing and guiding you can do, you, you really do have very little control over that conversation sometimes. No doubt about it. I look at it as an almost a four or five to one ratio in regards to the amount of content you can create, because when you're relying on a guest to bring their perspectives to your show, yes, you may have an impactful conversation, but all the time you spend in preparing for that interview and even before the preparation, actually finding a person that's going to be a good fit and bring impact to the microphone and ultimately have some sort of 
great connection with your audience that makes them want to be invested in the content, that takes time. In that time, you could be producing four to five solo episodes and be a month ahead in your content creation, or you could do more than one podcast release per week. So there's many advantages to leaning into that. Another one that we should talk about as well is the fact when you think about, like you said, Mickey, you are relying on that other person. They may cancel morning of. They may, again, like you said, come come to the show and go into sales mode and you have no control over it. But if they don't show up or they reschedule last minute, you may now be in a position to where you have to do a little scrambling to fill that void that they left. Now, if you're properly planning your show out, you won't have that issue. But at the same time, it can be a bit of an inconvenience if you clear time and then out of nowhere, they say they can't show up because of one thing or another. It's true. Guesting is great for things like backlinks, having other websites directing mm -hmm. traffic to you and, and whatnot. But at the same time, it is a lot more of a scheduling <laughs> issue because again you can if you're doing a solo podcast you can time block time every week at the same time to do your recordings and show if you have guests that's not possible you have right. to be adapted to their needs right you're going to have guests in australia and asia on different time zones and if you're not able to adapt you're going to miss out on potential guests who could be really powerful for your show so you know in terms of a, an overall uh, operations standpoint solo podcasting is just easier 100%. And I, I should throw the disclaimer out there now. In no way are we shitting on the podcast guesting world at all. In fact, this is something that I recommend to solo podcasters. Make those valuable connections so you can promote your show via the podcast platform because you have a 100% chance of connecting with a podcast listener if they hear you on another podcast. So it's a tremendous way to build listenership but always be that guest that brings value and sticks to your times and gives ample notice if you do need to reschedule. Overall, in the content creation mindset that we are putting on the table today, I think this is where the strategy comes into play. When you are thinking solo, you have a lot of advantages that you control. I think that's the biggest point of the takeaways that you've mentioned so far, Mickey, is the fact that you can control your schedule and you can create your content when you want to, without having to worry about somebody else being in the room with you at the same time. I completely agree. I think it all comes down to your goals, right? Where you are in your business and what your primary objective is. So if, if you have zero audience and you need to grow an audience and you want to start leveraging guests to build your audience, that can absolutely make sense for a lot of people. But if you have even a small audience, usually it's not the size of the audience that's the problem. Usually it's your ability to convert more of them. Right. And a solo podcast is going to do a much better job of putting money in the bank than a guesting podcast usually. I agree. In a lot of cases, and you think of some of the big, big podcasts of the world, like going as big as the Joe Rogan experience or something like Amy Porterfield's show, many of the listeners show up because of the, of the host. So if you are building a presence and you are attracting the right people, they're coming because of you especially if they don't have another choice. If it's just you on the microphone and you're making that impact and providing the transformations that they're looking for, of course they're going to come back for more. More importantly, as they get more invested in your message and build that trust level, they're going to start recommending your content to others, which is the most important aspect in all of this. When you can get your listeners turning to colleagues and friends in their social media circle, and saying, you need to listen to Mickey's podcast. I'm learning so much. That's how you experience the true tangible growth that you need to succeed. Absolutely. And I think it's worth noting, not all of us are Joe Rogan or Amy Porterfield. <laughs> Joe Rogan <laughs> and Amy Porterfield do an incredible job of maintaining their position as experts in their guest podcast appearances. Mm -hmm. So anytime they bring someone on, they do a really great job of elevating to the level of the person they have on the show. A lot That's of it. us, especially if you're an entrepreneur starting your business, we struggle with some self-confidence issues. There are some insecurities there. And oftentimes we default to the coach me, help me. I am like the listener instead of we're peers collaborating together on a topic. And if you're going to be using guests on your show, that is the best approach, but it does take practice and time to learn that. Whereas when you're by yourself, 
you're just mastering your skills of communicating, of connecting with your audience on your own without that battle. So if you do have self-confidence issues, especially related to, you know, maybe a little bit of, of comparisonitis with others, <laughs> solo, solo shows are just the way to go. I've always felt that that aspect of podcasting is one of the strongest pillars that many people ignore is the fact that it does level the playing field. And you, some podcasters may get a guest that they, oh my God, I'm, they're so out of my league. I can't believe I've landed them. Or they land a guest appearance of their own on a show that they feel they are so below and the guest or the host is just going to blow them out of the water. You're there for a reason. And your message does not need to resonate with everybody, but if you deliver it with confidence and you know what you're speaking about and what you want to accomplish, whether you're the host or the guest, person on the other side of the microphone is going to be on the same level as you. And you're working with synergy to create content that the audience is going to get invested in. That's what it's all about. But if you come into it feeling nervous or if you're hosting someone that you feel is over your head, now you go into fanboy or fangirl mode. It derails the whole point of the conversation. And the person on the other end of the mic might be looking at you like, what the hell is happening right now? So treating it as a collaboration is the only way to fly. Yeah, I agree. I think it does take time investment to get to that place where you show up regardless of who the guest is ready to collaborate. And that preparation is something that so many podcasters skip right? Yeah. They just hop into calls unprepared. I can't tell you as a guest how many shows I've hopped into where the host had no idea what we were going to talk about or who yeah. I was and was yeah. just scrambling and looking at a sheet of prearranged questions to try and make this thing go. It's very uncomfortable as a guest. And, and so I think yeah. if you're time limited, if you don't have that commitment to making time and sitting down and really investigating who your guest is and how you're going to craft something together, it's not worth it. That is the number one value proposition of solo podcasting, time freedom. If you have the time to do the research that is required to pull off a great guest appearance and then repeat the process consistently so your show grows, then a guest podcast is good for you. But a solo show, again, it frees up so much time to create more content and it keeps the spotlight on you, as we said. But I do want to piggyback on that to some degree because... We, we have talked about what the guest can bring to the mic and how you can build your content around that. But if you're going solo, clearly it's you carrying the conversation. There's no one to bounce that off of, nor is there another audience that could potentially share that content. What other aspects do we need to keep in mind if we're going the solo route and, and what we lose when we don't have a guest featured on our shows? That's a great question. And I think when you're comparing the two options, it's sometimes I'm a very visual person. So I like to get a whiteboard or a piece of paper and track down the pros and cons of each. And one of the big challenges is that audience size, right? When I have a guest, I can leverage their audience. They're hopefully going to share the content and expand the network for me. If I go solo, I'm going to have to find a way to expand my audience. And usually that means quantity and positioning of your content. So there are certain things you can do with that podcast content to make it go further and to make up for that difference. One of the things is the quantity of content you create from it. So if you're posting multiple times per day on social media platforms, if you're sending emails and really driving impressions, right, pushing that content out to a wider audience so the algorithms take it and use it, you're going to be fine. And the other thing too is, is going live often on those social media platforms is a huge missed opportunity for solo podcasters. Social media platforms love when you go live. It means you're mm -hmm. using all of the different aspects of their platform. They prioritize you. Look at Instagram. When you go live, you're moved right over to that very first position on stories because they love it when you use those pieces. So you can absolutely leverage your solo episode to do some live streams at the same time and grow your audience as well. That's an incredible point because social media as a whole, it's not always easy to leverage a podcast audience from it because not everybody on social media is following you strictly for your podcast. Now, in some cases, if that's all you do, then maybe that is slightly true. But at the same time, if people are in those infinite scroll holes and they come across the clip that you share, 
they're not necessarily going to say, oh my gosh, I've got to stop everything I'm doing right now and pull up my podcast app and start listening to this show immediately. More than likely, the best case scenario is that you're going to plant a seed and that person's going to say, that looks interesting. When I'm in the car tomorrow on my way to work, I'm going to listen to this podcast and see what it's all about. Leveraging social media from a live stream perspective, sharing clips well before the audio component goes out. Those are ways that you can use these networks to your advantage and maybe provide impact that doesn't necessarily mean a person has to listen to your whole solo podcast. The repurposable, is that a word, repurposable? I'm going to say it's yeah, we're rolling with it. The repurposable aspect of podcast content cannot be overshadowed. And when you're solo, it's all you. So you can clip that up in any length, any fashion, and then present it to your audience and make an impact in a huge way. Well, and I think even further than that, I'm going to stretch us a little bit and move into my kind of contrarian marketer um, perspective here. I'd expect the goal nothing less isn't... from you, Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> Oftentimes when we're creating a podcast, the goal isn't to just get a bunch of views on the podcast. The right. goal is to sell something. It's right. to drive revenue of some kind. And so that is the yardstick upon we measure success. Right. Not the podcast. The podcast is a distribution channel of content. And so not everyone is going to be attracted to your podcast. It doesn't mean that the content within it shouldn't be placed on different platforms in different ways to drive traffic to where you want them to go, which is usually your website, where they can learn more and buy. And so with your podcast, you absolutely want to be putting those episodes in different formats on your website, whether it's solo or guest related, and then distribute on social platforms as well. So as much as they might not hop over to the podcasting app, if they now know, like, and trust you, and that moves them to a purchasing decision, that's a win. 1000%. I'd ask you to drop your mic, but you're wearing headphones with your mic. So that would make it a little different. I would have to fall. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be good for the visual aspect that I'll share. Pretty on good. <laughs> I, I I'm glad you meme. Met... <laughs> well, hey, we can create memes out of this. We've taken the repurposing angle to a whole new level. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Mickey, I'm glad you mentioned websites because that is one of the biggest components of this. Because again, when we think about the calls to action that we leave on podcasts, oftentimes podcast guests and even hosts that they're doing solo shows They'll point people towards their social media platforms where they don't own that real estate and algorithm shifts and the powers that be turning knobs and changing things up on a very frequent basis. It, it doesn't make sense to send people there, but you can get them to your website where you own the real estate, you control the narrative, and you can deliver much more value. Your website, I've always looked at it like the keg at a keg party. When people show up to a party, where do they go? I'm thinking back to college days, they go right, <laughs> not so much anymore, but they go right to the keg, they get a beer, and then they go off in their own direction, talking to a crowd here or a crowd here. It's a lot of choose your own adventure. Once you get them to your website, they can choose to check out your podcast, to read your blog posts, to see what type of offers you have, what kind of value you can provide. If they want to go into social media mode, if your website is optimized, they can click on links to follow you on their favorite social media platform. Getting people to your website and getting your website actively involved in your podcast is one of the biggest factors that comes into play. Where do you feel solo podcasters can get the most benefit from leveraging their website for their show? Great question. I love it. You know, I'll use another analogy for your website, and I, I have a, a great kind of case study to share. So your website is your digital real estate. It's your real estate asset of your business. If you don't have a physical location, or even if you do, it is your real estate. And curb appeal matters, and what's inside matters if you want people to buy. Now, curb appeal is things like design and the beauty of the website and how easy it is to navigate. But when they, they walk in the door of your digital real estate, if the walls are bare and there's no furniture, there's nowhere to sit, converse, learn about you and your business, they're going to leave. Yeah. So your podcast is an opportunity to add furniture and conversation pieces inside your digital real estate. Each episode ideally should be a page on your website. It's improved SEO. It's building up the value. It's adding rooms and places and topics for people to engage with and ultimately lead them to a buying decision. And when it comes to your website in particular, there are just so many opportunities 
to push people and educate people on how your podcast and your content connects to your services, right? One of the big gaps that I see in terms of websites in particular is people will have their podcast there, but it has no reference to anything they do. And oftentimes the podcast is related to a topic unrelated to what the person does. So how do you connect the dots between the conversations you're having and how your service solves their ultimate problem? And that's your website. That's how you're positioning each of those pages to walk through the content and the, oh, by the way, I can fix this problem for you. Here's how. I think to add on to that, it's important to understand how podcasts are getting indexed on search engines these days. And more people are discovering podcasts because they're doing searches because they're looking for answers to a question or solutions to a problem. If your website is set up to where not only are you solving that problem, but you've got all this great podcast content that they can easily get access to that's going to help push them in the right direction. That eliminates a lot of that cold initial contact that you have a person in that sales process to where they've got to warm up to you and get to know you and build that trust. Your podcast is going to serve that purpose for you. So if you set it up on your website and optimize each page like Mickey suggests, and I completely agree with that. Each episode needs to have its own blog post or web page so it can be easily indexed through the search engines. It comes off more SEO friendly, but it gets people warmed up to what you do and how you can help them get the transformation that they're looking for. So this adds another layer to what this podcast content can serve in your overall objectives of building your brand and succeeding in regards to changing people's lives. Yeah, I think websites are, are one of the biggest missed opportunities. I know, I and speaking of that case study I was talking about, you know, there's there's a peer of mine who was running a content marketing agency. She had a website and it was full of content, podcasts, videos, pages, blogs, full. And she was able to get a high business evaluation and sell the business for over a million dollars because of her website content, period. Yeah. That is so huge. And so if you ever want to sell your business, this is one of the fastest ways to increase the value of that website is by creating great content that drives conversions. And that is your podcast. It's so funny you bring that up because I just had a conversation with somebody last week as you and I sit and record today that spoke to that exact point. You build your podcast around your brand. That's another asset when you do decide to exit that makes you more valuable. Absolutely run with something like that. It makes total sense. Well, and a lot of people think, oh, because I'm the host or I'm the person, it's not going to be valuable because I'm going to be leaving. Yeah. And so they're not going to have that anymore, but that's not actually true, right? The content lives. It's evergreen. Just because you're not creating new content doesn't mean that you're still not getting search traffic because of it. Right. And so it's still incredibly powerful, whether or not you're still involved in the future or not. And then to, to play devil's advocate, once you sell and that cash and that check clears, does it matter? <laughs> you're, you're out. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, in all seriousness, absolutely. That content is going to continue to serve a purpose. And now the people that own that asset can choose to build on it in their own way. Now, before we get to that point where we are selling our businesses and exiting, we want to make sure we're building everything in the proper way. And when it comes to podcasting, one of the major challenges that we face is how do we build content that's going to speak to our services and ultimately get people excited for what we do to where when they join on with us, it's a natural transition. We're going from that initial conversation of learning about what we do. Now we're into the actual work that's going to help somebody build their brand. What's the best way to position and ultimately build this podcast content so it can have that type of impact? I think, you know, there's um, a, a great ghost writer named um, AJ Harper. So she helped write Mike McCallowitz's Mike McCallowitz's Profit First and many other incredible authors books. And she has a saying about authorship that I think is very similar to podcasting. It's you're not writing a book about something. You're writing a book for someone. And I think that's the perspective shift we need to have in podcasting. You're not podcasting about something. You're podcasting for someone. So ultimately you have to know who that person is and what they need. Now, how we connect the dots between that and your service and your offering, I think people overcomplicate this way too much. 
They worry, I'm going to give away too much value. I'm going to tell them how to do it and they're going to do it themselves. It's not always the case. Information is free. Let's get real. You can find pretty much anything on Google. <laughs> yeah. Whether someone does something, that's the money maker, yeah. right? So how do we get people to take action? And so if you can highlight what's wrong and position your services as the here's how we get it done, you can educate them on all the pieces around it with your podcast and then tie that into ultimately your service. But I think remembering this is for that person and here's what it's going to do for them to get them to a place where they want to buy. That's all you need to think about. If you can filter every episode through that, you're going to be well on your way to an amazing podcast and know that yeah. you don't have to come up with a new topic or a new idea for every episode. Right. right? Repurposing topics doing mm -hmm. tangents, add-ons, redos, totally okay. Nobody, maybe 1% of your listenership is actually going to listen to every single episode. Right. And so it is perfectly okay to revisit topics regularly. It's actually good. It's fantastic. And it's something that transcends podcasting. That is an, a philosophy that you can utilize in all aspects of your content. It can be done with blogs, if, uh, more even more so with social media. Because we know that only a small percentage of our followership sees that content. So if you can find ways to nail down one topic and then create subtopics within that, you'll have pieces of content for every one of those subtopics. And then you can mix things up. And there's more than likely no chance that the person that sees those pieces is going to put them all together to know how to do what you can do for them. Yep, absolutely true. Well, Mickey, I know we could continue to roll on with this. I think we've covered a lot in regards to the strategy behind a solo podcast and how you can leverage it. So I want to thank you for all of the insight that you brought to the show today. Tell our listeners one destination where they can connect with you to keep this good thing going. Head on over to heymickeyanderson.com. Like the song, spelled like the mouse. You'll find a ton of free resources to learn how to promote your podcast once you've got it going. Beautiful. Highly encourage anyone listening to this podcast to go check out Mickey's website. It is very inspirational. I know as I was designing some things on my website, you, I used yours as a template because there was a, just a lot of value in how you laid things out. So Highly recommend that to everybody listening. And Mickey, as we wrap up, give everybody one big aspect of solo podcasting that they can implement into what they're doing today. Don't wait. Get started now. You will come up with ideas and the longer you wait to get them recorded, the less likely you are to remember them and to actually record them in the future. So any opportunity you can to start banking audio, do it right away. Very well said. You have your mission. Go forth and create. Mickey, thank you very much for joining me on Solo Podcast and Simplified. Thank you for having me. 